I am Mark Warman from Graveyard Cars along with my friend Don Jones. What are we doing here today, Don? Well, we're going to pick up a 69 Roadrunner that Will painted special for me. He did paint it very special. But the, the best part is <laughs> you didn't work on the car. Well, Doug this, did everything else. Well, this the shop did everything else. OK, so well, who put the shop in? You know what? Who's riding in the car with me? That's what I'd like to know. I'm going to be riding in the car with you. I don't trust Who's you. Who's driving? You're driving. Okay, I'm not okay, driving that yeah. heat. Oh. I can't wait. Roadrunner for 1969. America's first low-price, high-performance car is back. And this year, there's a convertible, a hardtop, as well as the original two-door coupe. There's only one place to catch Roadrunner, at your Plymouth dealer. Go take a look and see what Plymouth's up to now. This time on Graveyard Cars. Mark and the Ghouls go to work to bring a local celebrity's high school car back from the dead. Take a ride through some of Mark's favorite memories and witness this gorgeous made-to-order 1969 High Performance 383 Roadrunner as it speeds through body, paint, assembly, and onto the showroom floor for an historic reveal that pays homage to the car shows of Mopar's past. Will Mark's plans for a one-of-a-kind graveyard dreams reveal leave the owner speechless? Or will he steal the spotlight and turn Mark's dream reveal into a nightmare? Yeah. Are you lonesome tonight? No, Elvis, we're not going Do back there. Do you miss me tonight? So Are it's your you show sorry? from now on. Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. with our 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner 383 automatic two-door hard top in A4 buff silver. Now, while we've only been restoring the car for just a few short years, the backstory is the most important part of this. And that goes back to when Doug and I were just teenagers. So pretty much since the time Doug and I were old enough to even recognize cars, we both fell in love with Mopar, have been ever since. It's just the way it is. It got bit by the bug. Some of you at home know what that's like. So you go back to 1978, all right? Little dealership down in Cottage Grove called Don Jones Chrysler Plymouth. Doug and I would cruise down there and check out the cars that got traded in. It's a little Chrysler Plymouth dealership, and granted it's 1978, but in 1978, cars that we loved, 68 to 75 model Mopar, 74 model, they would get traded in over the weekend and they'd go out in what we call rat row, just the, the poop row in the back. They were still waiting for titles. The cars probably were going to get wholesaled. That was our goal for me and Doug. So it, it was a blast to go down there and check out all the cars. I remember all the ads on the radio all week long. It'd drive you crazy because you knew you were waiting for Sunday. Sunday or Monday is when we go down there because that's when the trade ins got put in. And the ad on the radio, Don Jones, Cottage Grove Chrysler Plymouth, the working man's friend, just three trees past the village green. That was their catchphrase. And unfortunately, the dealership also burned down around that time. It's terrible. It did get rebuilt on the exact same spot, but it was never the same little dealership. Today, it's Cottage Grove Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, I think is the name. But Don Jones' son, Don Jones Jr., is the one who owns it today. So when Don reached out, what he wanted to do is find out if I could build him a replica of the car he had when he worked for his dad and was in high school back in 78, I believe. A used car had came in on trade. It was a 69 Roadrunner, 383 automatic car, A4 buff silver. And he bought that car from his dad, probably got it for whatever wholesale price was at the time. And he fixed it up and did things to it like he blacked out the hood. And I can't remember if the half final top that was on it, if he put that on, but I think it was already on there. Those were things that happened back in the 70s. But he wanted to see if I could build him a car that would remind him of some of the best years of his life, like all of us. So one of the things I wanted to do after we decided we were going with a two-door post Roadrunner was 
to break out my old original books. I have the original dealership data book, the original pocket guide for the salesman, the uh, interior trim selectors. I've got all these. These are original books that came from dealerships. So I sat down with Don and we started at the beginning and we worked our way through just like you would have done if it was 1969 and you were ordering the car new. So we could go through and we could select the exterior color, the wheels and the tires, vinyl top or no vinyl top, sport hood, no sport hood, meaning the V21 blackout. Did you want bucket seats? Do you want bench seat? Do you want console? Do you want automatic on the column? All these things we were able to select by going through those books, right down to the engine, the transmission, the rear end, the rear differential, and what gear ratio, disc brakes, etc. So at the end of that day with him, I had a complete build sheet for his car, exactly like, well, similar, I should say, to what would have happened in the day if you had wanted to order that car. So when, when Don decided on a two-door post, I was really glad he did because a couple years prior to this, I had a client who had changed his mind about doing a restoration on a 69 Roadrunner. I basically bought the car from him and just had it sitting around for inventory should the day come. Well, the day came and it was a good, complete car. It, it did have some rust on it, but it had the original numbers matching engine in it. It was a factory four speed car, interestingly enough, and Don, of course, wanted an automatic. So there's some conversions there, but it was really the perfect candidate for what we wanted to achieve. And I, I actually think now that I'm thinking about that, I believe we featured that car in one of the You Make the Calls several seasons ago. It's the summer of 71, you're doing good. You got a good paying job, you got your steady girlfriend, life is great. You're looking for a car to go cruising with your buddies. You have the choice between a 1969 Plymouth GTX with a 426 Hemi, a four speed, and a 410 Dana rear axle, or a 1969 and a half Roadrunner. 446 barrel four speed fiberglass lift off hood. F6 green is the original color. Which one would you pick? So as I say, this car was pretty complete. It has started life as a green car on the exterior with green interior. So obviously we're changing that. As I had mentioned, it was a four speed car. We needed to make ours automatic transmission with a console and bucket seats. Other than that, it just had some rust in some significant areas that had to be fixed. But again, a complete car that had a title with it. Here's another new high-flying model for 1969. The Plymouth Roadrunner Convertible. Meep, meep. It joins the hot cars in this class. Meep, meep. So for 69, Plymouth's Belvedere line consists of the performance cars, GTX and Roadrunner, plus the Sport Satellite, Satellite and Belvedere, all with 116-inch wheelbases. You know, I saw the car when it first got here. It didn't look too bad. Most cars don't before they go to the dipper. But once this car went to the dipper and came back, it was a lot worse. And you saw a lot of like prior sins that were done. So that's one thing that's super crucial is you just don't know what you have till it comes back. We had to install a lot of new AMD sheet metal. We had to replace both quarter panels, both outer wheelhouses, rear body panel and extensions, trunk floor and extensions, also the main floor. We also installed new AMD doors. We also replaced the fenders and the hood because they were rusted out as well. You know, we do this so often that we really got it dialed down. So once we got that process done fairly quickly, it was right out to the mudroom. So once Michael kicked it over to the paint shop, we did our typical prime, let it sit, block, and then we can start disassembling the car, doing the jam work, then putting the car back together and getting it ready for final paint. The paint coat is A4, which is called a silver, but it's more like a champagne color. You know, we use the DBC line. It was six coats to cover. The last two coats are like a drop coat to ensure there's no modeling and it all looks nice and even. After that, I was able to clear it. I use the Deltron 2002 polyurethane clear. It's a super thick product. So based on temperature in between coats is longer than maybe other clears. So with the way I set the booth up, it's about a half hour, 45 minutes in between each coat. So once I finished clearing it, I kind of kicked it off to the side to sit for a couple of weeks to fully cure. After that, I cut my guys loose on it to give it a cut and buff and it looks amazing. We 
drivetrain on Mr. Jones' car is my department. I restored the original eight and three quarter rear axle. We added Hemi suspension, 10 inch drums, and I added a brand new Mosier third member with 3.91 gears and an Auburn locker. Mark and I installed the drivetrain together so it went really smoothly. The engine for the Roadrunner is a numbers matching original. The engine was rebuilt to factory specifications except for the comp cam and lifters. The transmission is a date coded 727 torque flight, all rebuilt to factory specifications except we added a shift kit for more positive shift. The engine and suspension were all detailed like the factory. The only change we made to the suspension was adding the Hemi torsion bars. We upgraded the front brakes from the original drums to 73 and up disc brake style. Mark and I worked together on the installation of the engine and front suspension. What's nice about working together is that we have done so many of these over the years that we've got this down to a science. After Mark and I installed the drivetrain, I got together with Bubble Boy and installed the Krager wheels and BF Goodrich radial TAs. All right. So the drivetrain came out beautiful. Doug did a great job on everything. The engine, transmission, rear end, detailed it out to factory 69 specifications, got it installed, everything fit great. Guys installed the wheels and tires, and what can you say? Craigers are the best wheel choice for a second day on one of those cars there is, and the BF Goodrich couldn't agree more with those. So one of the requests that we had, Don had talked to Mark, Mark related to me. He wanted Brody to spray the stripes because he has those memories with his dad. And that's great, I get all of it, but there is no chance in hell I'm gonna put Brody in the booth and say, spray these because when it doesn't work out, it's not cute. It's not, Don's not gonna look at it and say, it's okay, it's off a little bit, it's a memory. No, it's gotta be perfect. But I will bring Brody in the booth, let him learn and let him watch the process. But he is not, no way, no how on this earth picking up a paint gun and spraying those stripes. So when you're spraying these, it's super important to get the exact pattern down the exact consistency, the even, the technique from start to finish, because what happens is when it dries, it looks all nice and shiny, and then it dies back, and you wanna make sure that everything's nice, even, and consistent like we have here. Address it correctly, keep your job, and move out of the house. Okay, then. Yep. There are three distinctive grills in the Belvedere lineup. This is Roadrunner's new grill with dark argent paint treatment. The Satellite and Belvedere grill is different, has two horizontal bars without the paint treatment. GTX and Sport Satellite have a single horizontal bar insert and large identity letters. Headlights are framed with dark argent borders. Don Jones Jr., when I first made the deal with him on this Roadrunner, 69 Roadrunner, beautiful little car, says make sure that you adjust the eye bolts. Eye bolts? Will do. What are they? The eye bolts, man. You know what the eye bolts are. That front end's got to go down. In the, it's got to be low in the front and high in the back. Here's my picture. It's got to be low. He's talking about the torsion bar adjustment bolts. I just, to this day, have no idea what, where he got eye bolt, but they all called it. His group from down south in Cottage Grove area called it an eye bolt. I don't know. <laughs> you know, they are Highland bolts. And I guess if you turn the H sideways, it kind of looks like an eye. I, it does. You're from Cottage Grove too. Anyway, I wanted to take a minute. I wanted to take a minute and show everybody exactly how these work. Do you know how they work, Doug? Yeah, you screw them up to raise the car and you screw them down to lower the car. There you go. All right, cut. That's it. It's a wrap. Everybody understand? Good. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Let's go over here. So this is the lower control arm assembly for the right hand side. Now this is actually for a 70, right? Uh-huh. Because the sway bar location. But this is how you adjust the height of the car because this hexagon hole right here holds a torsion bar. You hear us talking about torsion bars all the time. Show these guys how that slides in there. I'm gonna hold that there. So that slides in there 
if we were to put it in the car, go ahead and hold the front of it. This goes in the torsion bar cross member at the back and it's solid, it doesn't move. It's this piece that has the ability to move. So this bolt is gonna come up, what he called an eye bolt, it's a torsion bar adjustment bolt, is gonna come up into that pocket and it's going to make this thing turn like that. And we're gonna do it with this adjuster right here. So if you just hold that right there, you guys can see how this thing will work. Now, as that thing comes up, it's rolling this torsion bar. But if this couldn't turn back here, it's adjusting the height of the car. The more in you go with this bolt, the higher the car goes in the air. Right there is maxed out or very close to it. That'd be if you wanted to ride a wheelie. <laughs> so we turn this around, come back down. And usually they're about that area right there. Tell me more about Roadrunner. I just love that beep beep horn. The Plymouth Roadrunner started out as a single model, a performance coupe at a low price. It became so popular that a two-door hardtop was added. For 1969, we have a third model, the convertible. It's beautiful. Isn't that leather on the seats? It looks like leather, but it's actually a leather grain vinyl, rich and durable, beautifully pleated. This trim is standard on the convertible and hardtop, optional on the coupe with a decor group. finished I was able to take it out for actually several nice long drives. This was great because first off I've always told people that I like the ride and the feel of a B body so this one had all of that it, it really personified that nice big car feeling but with the muscle so driving the 69 Roadrunner is very much like driving the a 69 GTX in fact this one had as many options as a lot of GTX is supposed to be the gentleman's muscle car. The motor sounded fantastic. It's got that nice low rumble like you would expect from a, a 69 Roadrunner when it was new. The steering is precise. It's as precise as it can be. It's aligned us all new stuff. All the joints and fittings and everything on it are new, but it's still old integral steering. So there is a little bit of play in it, but it did track and drive very, very nicely. Now we converted this car over to power disc brakes. So when you hit that brake pedal, it also stopped really well better than you would have gotten out of your drum brake setups. It's a comfortable car. When you're setting in, it's very comfortable. It, the bucket seats are kind of plush. You kind of sink into them a little bit. You've got a cockpit style dashboard in front of you with the wood grain wheel and the console. It's a nice, really nice package. As you're driving it down the road, I think you just begin to take that stuff for granted till you jump into a different model of car that maybe doesn't have all those things. And then you can appreciate how that car feels when you're in it. This car got a lot of looks when we're going down the road because you stand back, it's a beautiful color. I'm not even sure it looks silver. It almost looks beige to me, but I'm colorblind, might not be. But looking out through the windshield, seeing the sport hood treatment on it with the air grabber, it is fully functional air grabber. He optioned that out, the N96. Just really demands attention. So I'm getting all these thumbs up from people all over the places I go down the road. Uh, weather was nice, so a lot of people were out. And I think as I see it going around the corners in some of the footage that you're watching, it really does remind me of the difference between our cars that we had when we were kids, which were used cars. And when we spent money fixing our cars up back then, we spent it on a stereo. I put tuck and roll velvet interior in my car. I did put mags on, I put headers on it, but I didn't go out and invest in rebuilding the front suspension so it would drive and track like it's supposed to. So when I see that thing going down the road, it really makes me think this must have been what it was like had I been old enough to pay attention. I guess when that car came out, I was seven. So I, I really probably wasn't paying attention to 69 Roadrunners. It really, really is a beautiful car that we're gonna be able to give to Don. I know there's no doubt in my mind that he is going to absolutely love it. Stay tuned. Bodywork, final paint, the engine install, and final assembly 
have all been completed on this gorgeous 1969 homage to Don Jones Jr.'s high school roadrunner. With Mark's nostalgic test drive firmly in the past, the preparations are complete and the plan is set. All that's left is for Mark and the Ghouls to unveil this iconic Mopar muscle car with a reveal that's an homage of its own. But will the owner's antics upend Mark's graveyard dream for a one-of-one -one reveal? Or will Don's surprise twist on this historic homage keep this Roadrunner reveal from careening off a cliff? Find out when Graveyard Cars returns. Graveyard Cars along with my friend Don Jones. What are we doing here today, Don? Well, we're going to pick up a 69 Roadrunner that Will painted special for me. He did paint it very special. But the, the best part is <coughs> you didn't work on the car. Well, Doug this, did everything else. Well, this the shop did everything else. Okay, so well, who put the shop in? You know what? Oh, I was ready for this. Oh, Don thinks he's the only car salesman I ever dealt with. I've been doing this since 1984, man. I've dealt with all the California cowboy slick talking, let's work out a deal in the back room salesman. This is a trade you're talking to here, man. Look at this. This is natural. Who's riding in the car with me? That's what I'd like to know. I'm going to be riding in the car with you. I don't trust Who's you. Who's driving? You're driving. Okay, I'm not okay, driving that okay. heap. The reason we're doing our little uh, introduction here is we have just finished Don's 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. We've talked about many times in the past on the show that he had one identical to it. When you were a young man. Yes. Your daddy gave it to you. Certainly. <laughs> you know, this is the whole Spooner thing I talk about. I, I, I know Don maybe paid for a little bit of that car, but he's Spooner, right? He liked Dougie. He liked Will. They has it all given to him. You need a new car. Here's your car. You, you, you need a diploma, Will? <laughs> I know your GPA's down there. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Count it out, right? Not me. Oh, Trey ain't no Spooner. All he ended up with was a dead dad, colorblind, odd good slaughter, low blood sugar, poor. Look at this is how I dressed to go to school. You don't think that was a long sixth grade? That was a long sixth grade. I think he actually earned that one because I saw some pictures, either good at Photoshop or they were real. He's covered in this little work outfit. He'd been out sanding on cars. I had to make it look good. Yeah, make it look good. And I've said this many times to many of our uh, fans and people that we talk to is some of the best times in our lives were then, even though at the time it doesn't feel like that. But I mean, this is a great example of it. Are you excited to see your car? I've been excited for the last four years since okay, I got a hold of it. Okay, don't date Maybe it's four it years took. and a couple months. Don't but do that. Just anyway. Say now this is true. When I look back over my life, I agree. Some of the best times we had were in those crazy cars. I remember Mark pulling up in front of my house with his charger, wanting to go cruising for chicks, he'd say. Whatever. I never knew him to pick up any chicks, but he had a pretty cool car. <laughs> Me and Don could be like Abbott and Costello. OK. <laughs> All I wanted to have was a sentimental moment, but you can't do that, can you? Well, it's just I... not in your wheelhouse to do. Yeah. Are you lonesome tonight? No, Elvis, we're not going do back there. Do you miss me tonight? You know, Don's a character. Great guy, and I tell you what, if you think Mark is a natural on camera, I've seen a hundred guys on camera get nervous and turn red and can't talk. This guy was meant for camera. He couldn't be happier being in front of the camera. He just wanted to talk the whole time. Did you like his Elvis singing? Did he sing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had Layla there and she started getting cranky, so I left. Today, Don owns several dealerships, 10, 12, 13 dealerships, all over the western half of the country. He could drive any car on this lot that you see, and the most excited you've been about getting a car is a car he had when he was in high school. Why can't you just do that? Now, I want you guys to watch this. While we're talking and I'm trying to explain something to Don, he's checked out. He's checked out. He's thinking of his next line. He wants to get me. Gotcha, take down the tray, right? But me, I'm on focus. As soon as he pops a shot across the bow, I rebound. That's what I do, right? I'm Charles Barkley out there on the, on the sales room floor. You ain't coming at me with none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
this, for each side. I know you're used to being in the big let's fish. Let's go look at it. You ready to look at an 1969 Plymouth Rotor and this is gonna be great. I can't wait. I like your shirt. I'm, I'm excited. It's very slimming, but I saw you when you're in blue. There you go, hey. <laughs> All right, so after six months of waiting for your six car. Months, that, yep. <laughs> no, I think you set a record on, the, on this quick build. I, I did, well, I, we did Mr. Martinez's a little bit quicker because I forgot the dates, but that doesn't matter. As long as, as, long as I'm in the top three, I'm the, okay. The point, you're in the top three. You're excited to see your car. I can't it's wait. 19, it's not, what year did you own your car? 78, came in trade here in 78. In 78. 78. You went up to your dad, said, give it to me, and you're yep. held your and hand he, up. he laid a couple thousand on me too. Couple That's grand and yeah. some, and a full tank and of gas. No, and a cooler in the back. Yeah, there it is, right there, right? Gives him the car, two grand cash, and a cooler full of beers to cruise around. You know what I'm saying? You know what I got? I got a collapsed disc from being a pole bear at my dad's funeral. That's what I got, no charge. That was good. Need a bit of <laughs> I'm okay. Let's go. Let's unroll the car. 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. Let's do it. See what you think. See if it's any better. Look at that. Let's go. Let's unroll the car. 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. Let's do it. See what you think. See if it's any better. You know, uh, all kidding aside, when back in the 50s and the 60s, probably before that, I don't know. I know even up into the 70s, uh, the Lincoln Mercury dealership that I worked for talked about it. When there was a new car model, it came in on the convoy truck or on the train covered. And when they unveiled it, they usually unveiled it at big shows like Chicago and New York Auto Fair. It was a gala event. When they unveiled these cars, there were girls, models, there was music, there were bands. I mean, it was really something. They were proud of these cars. They wanted to keep them under wraps. They wanted that awe factor, a real live awe factor that you're only gonna get from the very first time you see a car. Look at oh boy. that. And no offense, but I doubt very much your car looked like that in 1977, because they didn't look like that when they rolled off the showroom floor. Wow. Nice. wow. I told myself I wouldn't get emotional. That's okay. Okay, and I'm- That's okay. Wow. Buddy, I get that way all the time, every day. So a great example of what I've said many times, many times over the years, when you look back at people's reactions to their cars, they're overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed for a multitude of reasons. And, you know, one, certainly the car's beautiful, but Don Jones gets to see beautiful cars all the time. He walk out and look at a brand new, beautiful, brand new Jeep, Grand Cherokee, Wagoneer, blah, blah, blah. For him, this was 1978 all over again. That's what touched his heart. That's what got him misty eyed, was that he was able to travel back in that second. He won't be able to go back and relive this moment but he can create a whole bunch of brand new moments with that car and get in the car with his buddy and talk about how awesome it was and relive the same journeys out to Cottage Grove Lake and cruising the gut. That's the whole point to all of this. These cars are a powerful key to our past. And something like this just reminds me that even, even somebody of his stature, Brett Torino, very wealthy person, look at the fun and the joy these cars bring them. Nothing like it in the world, man. It's the best choices, I think. It's a wonderful color. I mean, the fact is you just got a used car back in 77. But now that you put it together, would you do anything different? Even if you hadn't gorgeous. had a silver car? I'm glad you guys picked the hood treatment for me. Just, yep. Uh, Will and I collaborated on that and decided that was the right answer. Yeah, get back, make sure you got the stance you like. It's a good looking car. <laughs> it's a good looking car. Damn. So this is really cool to see a car that we built sitting in the showroom of Don Jones Chrysler Plymouth in Cottage Grove, Oregon. I can't describe how rewarding this is. And meeting Don Jones, it's almost like I know the guy, you know? After all these years and all those commercials and doing this car for Mr. Jones, it's almost like he's family to us. Let me uh, show you what the interior of a new car in 1969 looks like. 
So this was a really cool type of reveal that we, I don't think we've ever done before, or I haven't done before since I've been working here, but we got to put it in a showroom floor at the dealership. It's just really cool to see the car all cleaned up and in such a beautifully lit room, you get to just see every part of that car, super detailed, just really cool. And it's in a car dealership. So what more could you ask for? That's awesome. So I'm really lucky to be able to do what I get to do. You know, make people's dreams come true with their cars or help them relive, you know, some of their past moments that they've had. And uh, just hearing their stories about working with their fathers or the, you know, the even brothers, sisters or whatever. It's just really cool to be able to help make those memories come true for those people again. Unbelievable, what can we say? So yeah, it's a base coat, clear coat, where originally they were just single stage enamel. You'd never get the color that you wanted out of. Okay, this will be one of the few times I'm honest and it'll probably make TV at home. I feel like this was the coolest reveal yet because A, it was outside of location. And taking an old Mopar and putting it in a Mopar dealership, I think is rad. So I loved every aspect of this reveal. The only one. The body is unbelievable. I, the lines, geez. So for anybody who doesn't know, when I first talked to Don Jones about building a car for him, a couple, two, three, four years ago, Don says, the only thing I want is I want to make sure it's the right color, it's got the vinyl top on it, it looks exactly like the one I had when I was in school. He said, now, it's important that the stance is right. You remember saying yeah. that? I said, well, yeah, we, what, what, tell me what right is. So he sent me a picture of the car, had a pretty good rake to it. He goes, so I want you to make sure you lower those eye bolts. <laughs> uh, no idea what you're Hey, I knew about. what I meant. And it worked out. What's an eyeball? You know, the eyeball. Well, you can keep saying that, but it doesn't make me know what it is. The eyeball, the eyeball, the eyeball. He goes crazy about the eyeball. So later, I'm sitting there. It, it, it's actually, I'm in bed at that night, and I'm thinking, crazy son of a gun got too much money. He's lost his money. <laughs> Ford's had eye beam suspension. Maybe he's had a, a hallucination in his eye beams. Then it hit me. He's talking about the torsion bar adjusting bolt. Eye bolt. I called Tony. He told me it was an eye bolt. So I have made you an uh, eye bolt chain. See how it's an H? Yeah. Now, eye comes after Now H. I'm going to put it behind my back. And now it's an eye. The one thing I did do because Don had kept calling the lower control arm adjustment bolts eye bolts, I wanted to make him something to remember it. So I made him a genuine ice tray necklace. It's real stuff, it's real chain. It's, it's not some little dog chain, it's not made out of gold. This is a real zinc plated chain. It's masculine, macho. Remember how Robert De Niro called it macho in, in Cape Fear? And then all those guys jumped out from behind the dumpster and was gonna do a whooping on him and he ended up messing them all up. <laughs> That's Bob De Niro. You know, and that's Cape Fear. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> There's your eyeball. Disco. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right. No one else got one, right? Nobody no, else is ever going to get an eyeball. That's for you to hang up in your den. Hey, can't get any better. Or whatever than it is you do, and there you go. I'm gonna that's, walk downtown. I hand with drilled it. I hand polished it, and I even made the chain. Okay, I bought the chain. Doesn't matter. Here, hold this. I don't want to scratch his car. Why don't you have yourself a nice seat behind there? I know that you're a tall fella. I don't expect you to fit, but you probably fit in 77, right? <laughs> Again, I think it's just so cool that we're at a point now at Graveyard Cars that with all the original data, with all the original books, with the literature, with the knowledge and the experience and the cars and the staff, that you can walk in and say, hey, I want a 69 Roadrunner like I had in high school. You got any pictures? Because if you do, we can duplicate it. Yeah, see, so you put a few pounds on him. Yep. That's okay. What can I say? I put on 10, that's mostly muscle. <laughs> what are you laughing hey, No, I coughed. Yeah, there's a lot of pollen in the air down Thank there. you. Wow. Put the wood grain sport wheel on there. This, you wanted the AM, yeah. FM. I don't know if your car had a factory AM, FM or just an AM, FM Factory in it, but AM. Factory. It was a factory AM, but that's the AM, FM. I didn't want to spoil you with rear speakers. You can do that on your own, but it's got an AM radio in the front. There's your uh, console. Now your car uh, was a column shift. Yep. Yeah. So we got a console in That's there so for cool. you. Just a little nicer, you know, just a little nicer, luxurious package than, than maybe your car would have had. Unbelievable. But I think this is the kind of car you can just keep till the day you, you don't care anymore about anything and always know that you've got a beautiful car. If you do this every sit day, so you're not used to it. No, I understand. Stuff is brand new. I just need to park it somewhere and just sit in the car for a while. You could do that. 
There, we could put some beers in there. You go out to the lake. You're married though, right? Unbelievable. Probably couldn't get out of the car. I have to stay in the car. This is a chick magnet. You, get, <laughs> you gotta be careful driving this. You remember what happened when we were on the gut back in the day? Uh, you wanna look under the hood, buddy? Yeah, I do. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. Wow. And again, you're probably didn't quite exactly look like that. Well, yours wasn't an air driver, right? No. Yeah. It's all standard. So you got the Coyote Duster decal with it. That's all part of the air grabber look. We have a brand new replica radiator but in here. Got the Roadrunner arm. I know that one. Now, Dougie That's built the drivetrain for this car and Justin detailed the rest of the engine. Well, basically he assembled the whole car. So Justin is in charge of assembly. So if there is anything wrong, I'll give you his cell number. Okay. You can give him He's a call. He's a 24-hour guy, He's right? a 24-hour guy. 365. Dougie is too. No. I can give Look you at this deal. It's so amazing to me looking at someone like Mr. Jones, who owns so many dealerships, to look at something like this that we built and smile the way he did. I can't think of a better pat on the back than that. You know, like by the time I had mine, we had Mickey Thompson. Oh, I know. Yeah, second up. day, this yeah. And you're always welcome to do any of that stuff you want. Yeah. This is the original Fender tag. Remember, this car still has the original numbers matching engine, but not transmission because it was a factory four-speed car. Gotcha. And we converted it to an automatic. This is the plenum for the air grabber. So, yeah, when it's closed, this rubber seal touches here. And then those vents we were talking about that are oh, red okay. draw the air into it. I didn't know that was had like five. I didn't know that worked. Horsepower. Yeah, it actually was a functional oh, thing. Cool. Pretty cool. Oh, it is. Uh, everything is date coated. So we have date coated replica of the original spark plug wires, heater hoses. This is a replica of the original. No, this is actually, is this a real? That's an original, that's an original horn. Let me, let me sound that thing off for you. Oh, there you go. Makes the whole car. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear it? Yeah, we got to. Yeah, we got to. <laughs> so here's one thing I thought was cool. Here's a 69 Plymouth Roadrunner on a brand new Chrysler dealership. Of course, Plymouth's gone, but it's still a Chrysler dealership. Being able to start that engine up and hear it kind of reverberate throughout the building, there, there's a toughness. There's a sound, there's a deeper sound to the old muscle cars. That's not to say some of the new stuff like my Hellcat Red Eye sounds tough as hell, but it's a different, it's a tinnier sound. These have Hemi mufflers on them, at two and a quarter inch pipes, all going through that 383 Super Commando. It has a low, dull, tough rumble to it. I could tell when he heard it and I revved it up, you could see him smiling from ear to ear. That's probably because that's what he did back in the day. I know yeah. you can drive any car on the lot, but that's cool. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's cool. This is wonderful. Yeah. So nice. Just love it. I'm going to look at it for a little bit. You okay. guys go eat. <laughs> awesome. Hey, can't thank you enough. Okay. True Glad pleasure. Thank you. Thank Unbelievable you. job. Thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Unbelievable, just a killer car. I love the choices you made. I love the choices you didn't let me make. I mean, <laughs> just, I know that all these guys get up here and they, you know, oh yeah, that's, this is exact, just what it was. It's really cool for me because, you know, we're, we're close to the same age. I'm a few years older than you, but still that era and remembering these cars when they were really on the, I mean, this, this wasn't a novelty like, Today, this is a novelty for you and it's a great memory, but you don't need to drive it to get groceries. You drive your new Ford or your new Dodge or your new whatever. But back in the day, these were transportation cars and that's why we didn't quite treat them with the royalty and the care and the things that we did. Yeah, but it's all I wanted to drive. I know, yeah. Well, you could have had, it was 77. Your dad oh, had a Plymouth Would you rather have driven this or a 77 Aspen? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> think about that, we know. I think right? I know the answer yeah. to that one. <laughs>
Well, oh, now you're talking an Aspen with the 318 because I mean, oh, hard to argue with that. Well, Don, it's a pleasure working pleasure. for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. guys. Let's grab some Thank you, Great Thank job. You. Good job. All right. Okay, go eat. Let's eat. So, in all honesty, the reveal was awesome. And then to cater for pretty much our whole crew and his own crew. And then he's such a family oriented guy that he wanted the wives there. So I was able to have Heather come down, bring Layla there. Brody's already there. So I got a good group of my family being part of it, which is few and far between to get a moment like that. So to have them there, honestly, was awesome. So Don is a really cool guy. Actually, I've actually never seen somebody more comfortable in front of a camera than Mark. He was actually stealing the show from Mark, and I thought that was just hilarious. He's just a really cool, fun guy, making fun of himself, wearing the necklace that Mark gave him, the eye bolt, so that was really cool. He provided food for us through catering, and it was just delicious. We all just really thank him for that. It was awesome. So what a rewarding day this was. What a great guy Don Jones is. He opens up his dealership for us to display the car that we just finished. Then he puts out this wonderful barbecue for us. And our families were there. My wife and grandchildren and some of the other cast members' families were there. It was just amazing, so rewarding. What a wonderful day Don Jones provided for us. Guess what, Mom? You're on camera. <laughs> you know, Mom passed away a few years ago, and uh, she loved, always loved graveyard cars. Oh, well, it's her son doing it right, but she legitimately enjoyed watching it. And I know she would have loved this episode because it is full circle, and she would have remembered me talking about Don Jones Chrysler, the working man's friend. So for us to be out there mingling around, you know, at the end, I just thought that was really stand up of what Don did, you know, ordering in, catered in lunch for everybody and opening it up to our families. You know, my wife, Suzanne was there. Uh, Alyssa's daughter, Brookie was there, she's so much fun. Don was really, really great. Rolled out the carpet for us. It was a fantastic time. I do it again. Well, as a matter of fact, I can do it again. We're building a 71 CUDA form for those of you who want to stay tuned. 71 CUDA 446 barrel automatic with 7,000 original miles missing the original engine, does have the original transmission to it. And he wants to do more cars down the road, so I'd like him to build me a Graveyard Cars dealership. Don, are you watching this? Because I think that's what you should do. Build me a Graveyard Cars dealership that looks exactly like a 1970s dealership. Don't charge me a monthly rent. That would be disingenuous. Just build it for me and give it to me, you know? Luck would happen to you if you were my age, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> How is it? Good. Tony, do you have one? No, Tony, you don't have one.